Coming up today, we've got some bugs in the oilseed rape. Adam's got stuck in a puddle. Um, Andrew's towed him out, but so we've got some amateur footage of that. I've been putting pre-emergence herbicides on. The pigeons have been playing havoc. And uh, I'm having a quick look at the stone trailer because I've come up with a good idea. Looks like someone's uh, been vandalizing everything. Look at all them potatoes. Wish the pigeons would come and eat them. Get this flattened off now and so it means. I wonder who wrote that on the mirror. I need a new broom. Just look at that field of wheat. Brilliant. I don't know who's written this about a new broom. That is Christine. It's everywhere. Waiting at the crossing now, we've got a train going that way and a train going that way. And then um, ring back and I can go across. Ball on the other side, just, uh, just starting to come up. Put the pre-emergence herbicide on it, which should stop everything growing by the barley, hopefully. But we'll try. Because I put that different dribble bar on yesterday, I needed to put some extensions on to get it to drop down lower. So I need to set them extensions off now and put them back on these two nozzles. Because the forward facing nozzles and it hit the bar otherwise. I'll just do that, but I just thought I'd show you the floor. So you can see the different fertilizers on the floor. Some white stuff is nitrogen, and the pink and orange stuff, that's the potash that Sam put on yesterday. So next shower of rain, that'll wash in nicely. I don't know whether you can see in the video, I think you can. It's nice yellow stuff we're putting on now. That's a uh, pre-emergence spray, like I said. They're on the spring barley. This is a field of oilseed rape. This is the first one we sown. I don't know if you can see, it's just got like a yellow tinge to it now. And that's because it's starting to come into flower. So in a few days, it'll be totally yellow, this field, which will be good. Anyway, I just want to show you something. If I just get this flower in, shake it. See these little bugs on it? Oh, I've lost it, hold on. There's some there, see in there? There's little black bugs. I'll try and shake some into my hand. There we go, see them. They're little pollen beetles. Now, a lot of people would spray them off and get all excited about them because they shouldn't be in the crop. Well, to be honest, now it's coming to flower. They're what we call a beneficial, so they're gonna help it pollinate. But a lot of agronomists out there will go, oh, you need to spray them off. They're gonna eat all the buds and everything's gonna die. But it's a lot of rubbish. They're gonna make this crop a better crop if I leave them in. So I will be doing. I haven't put an insecticide on oilseed rape, I think, for about seven years now. And it's never done any harm because of it. And I don't still suffer with cabbage stem flea beetle either. Now, I don't know whether it's too wet in the northwest or the beneficials that don't get affected by the insecticides you'd put on uh, eating the cabbage stem flea beetles or whatever. I just don't know. But you can definitely grow oilseed rape without insecticides. Private road, not on the highway. Big shout out to the chippy in Rain Hill. I just stopped because there was no cars around and nipped in to get a bag of chips. And I only had a ten pound note and a twenty pound note, and they like they tried to give them me because they didn't have any change. They're like, oh, don't worry, give, give us next time. I don't even go in there that often, so I thought it was really friendly of them. Anyway, I managed to find a two pound coin in my pocket, so uh, I'm not in debt to them. But I thought it was nice that they were willing to just give me a bag of chips. Andrew's got the big strap because somebody's got stuck, and it's not him this time. We're here, it's a 6250R. To go and tow him out with the old faithful JCB. Just found a pair of road, uh, wire cutters on the road. Bonus. Look at all them pigeons there. Just trying to eat this spring barley. Thousands of them. Pigeons are over there now, eating where we patched up that winter barley with spring barley. And then this is the field that I'm just spraying now. Uh, you see the booms down here. This is with a pre-emergence. This is just showing through, but it shouldn't affect it because it's uh, it's it's fine. But as long as the weeds aren't showing through, and then we're all good. I'll jump out actually, and I'll show you where. Um, shower rain you can see it a lot better but I'll show you from the spray now it's a bit 
hard to see from the sprayer. If I jump down, you'll see better. So, there you go. This was sown, I don't know, what, two weeks ago, was it? Got its fertiliser on there, ready to go. Got a yellow tinge to it now, because I've just sprayed it. But yeah, that's good. This is the seed that we uh, that we cleaned and then dressed in the concrete mixer, if you remember. But there it all is there. It's always nice to see it coming out of the floor because it means that the hard work's worked, if you get me, and, and the seed's growing. Nice blue skies today. Not a breath of wind either, which is good. Stuck, stuck behind a John Deere at the traffic lights. Danny called in to uh, borrow some bean seed, so I was winding him up about his drill because I'm not a fan of combination drills. It's like a corn drill, but smaller. Proper one, but it works. It's one of them things that stirs all the soil up and makes it pan when it rains. Power hour, it should be banned then. One that when you do it once and it grows. <laughs> He says as he's going out, patching up. <laughs> this is the stone trail I borrowed off my mate John yesterday. And um, it was really handy, obviously, filling the drains in. There's a second hand one on eBay at the moment for about 1,500 quid, but new ones aren't actually that expensive. But what I want to do is try and get one custom made with a longer elevator and rubber shoots around the bottom. And then we can use it for all sorts then. So we could fill it with fertilizer and use it for filling this, taking fertilizer to this fertilizer spreader where it's out in the field. We can fill it with wheat, and uh, if we get a longer conveyor coming up here, and if it's long enough and tall enough, we can fill the corn drill with it, especially the new drill, or put fertilizer in the new drill when we're sowing rape. And also we could use it for filling seed bags because it's just basically a hopper and conveyor. And if you've got it plumbed into the tractor, you only gotta press the buttons on the back. So you could basically have the bag here on a forklift with a ramp going up, use these buttons on and off and use it for filling the seed bags. So rather than it just being a stone trailer, just for when we're draining, which isn't that often, feels like we've been done a lot this year, we can use it for all sorts of different things around the farm. So I'm gonna see if I can get a price off someone to make one sort of custom made with a different belt on it. Like I say, that, that goes up high. I think it'd be really handy. I think I've caught the sun again. Um, filling up now with some clean water. And then I'm also filling my wash tank up as well clean water and I'm just going to rinse out now because what I've been spraying today it's settling the nozzles overnight and it dregs and then it goes like concrete and cement and it blocks all the nozzles I'm just going to flush out with clean water I think it was on Tuesday we dug down to these drains here and exposed them and let the water get away so that's just where we dug too deep the drains just sort of just under there as you can see it's all dried up now so we dug three trenches on the top of the drains. Uh, again, that was what we went too deep looking for it, so that's not drained away. It's all fell in a bit. But what we'll do is we'll we'll pull that out and then we'll stone that up to the top and then it won't lie wet here then. So it's good, because that was quite heavily silted, that drain, but it's obviously still working. It goes off that way, so we're going to clean that ditch out as well in the next week or so when we get a chance. Just been folding the spray out. This is where the washing out on. There's nothing on this field yet. This will be sunflowers in a couple of months come to get some potatoes for me tea and they're as fresh as the day they were they were put in well not when they put in but when they first grew a few spritz on them I actually know something wrong with that one but look at that now wrong with that the spritz on them are where they've started to regrow but they're still fine they still taste good just thinking about this maybe you could have sort of an auger this side on a hopper that could fill the drill and then the other side just a normal conveyor belt but quite a long one so you can keep away from the trench and use it for filling bags of aggregate you just put the conveyor one way or the other or just get a conveyor that will reach the whole thing maybe this was yesterday's quiz question yeah lots of people did get it right some didn't it is an inverter so they basically convert DC electricity that comes off the shed roofs with the solar panels into AC electricity. So we've got five of them. Because I think we've got about 800 solar panels on these shed roofs. So in the sun, you can hear them humming. And if you're younger, you can hear the humming worse because your ears mature when you get older and you can't hear the high-pitched noise that they make. Bit of a triple question today. Does anyone know what that black thing is? We 
JCB written on it, on the back of the fast track. Also, how much does it weigh, which is probably a bit of a clue. And what's that box there? If you think you know, uh, leave a comment in the box below. And um, I've thanks for people, some people have been sending me intros as well. So I'll, I'll put them on in the order that they've arrived. So if yours isn't on tonight, it's because it wasn't the first one that was sent to me. That's about it for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, click like and subscribe. And uh, here's an intro from Mark Mackay.